Grand Prix C now moves on to Cologne. We'll have action from that meeting in Sunday Grandstand tomorrow. We're moving on to the pool, action from the European Swimming Championships. That's after the lunchtime news from Moira Stewart. Good afternoon. The Central Committee of the Polish Communist Party is meeting to discuss the appointment of Poland's next Prime Minister. It's expected that the Solidarity journalist Tadeusz Mazowiecki will be asked to form a coalition government with Solidarity and two minor parties. A formal announcement is expected later today. Misha Gleni reports from Warsaw. The emergency session of the Communist Party Central Committee began this morning behind closed doors. President Jaruzelski is expected to tell the meeting of his decision to name the leading solidarity activist, Tadeusz Mazowiecki, as Poland's new Prime Minister. There is strong opposition in the Communist Party to the prospect of a solidarity-led government, but there is also a faction which favours cooperation with the trades union. If Mr. Mazowiecki does form the next government, it will be Poland's first non-communist administration in over 40 years. Misha Glenny, BBC News. Warsaw. Iran's new president has dropped a number of hardline anti-Western ministers from his cabinet. Most prominent is the interior minister, Ali Akbar Mutashami. He helped set up the Hezbollah group in Lebanon, which has been blamed for taking Western hostages. Two reliable reports this morning said that Ali Akbar Mutashami, a hardliner, is being dropped from the new Iranian cabinet. Mr. Motashami is a prime mover of the export of Islamic revolution and is relentlessly anti-Western. His departure would be a significant sign that President Rasanjani intends to steer Iran in new directions. But no sooner had the story emerged than half Iran's parliament had objected, urging the president to retain the radical minister. The next 24 hours will show whether president or parliament prevails. Tim Thuelen, BBC News in the Middle East. Here, the Director of Public Prosecutions is to decide whether two men, one of them a diplomat, should face criminal charges. The two, both British, were detained by police under the Prevention of Terrorism Act, then bailed. Andrew Balfour, who lives at Weybridge in Surrey, has worked at embassies in several Middle Eastern countries. He was recalled some weeks ago from his latest post as Vice Consul in Dubai. The businessman who was kidnapped from his home in Surrey on Monday has been reunited with his family. Police now say that Victor Cracknell escaped from a remote farmhouse in Devon after he'd been blindfolded with a wire noose around his neck. His wife and father negotiated with the kidnappers from their home in Guildford, and police say that a ransom was paid. Three men and three women who were arrested yesterday have been taken from Exeter to Surrey for questioning. Six American relatives of victims of the Lockerbie disaster have arrived in Britain to press for more effective action to prevent terrorism. 270 people died when a bomb blew up aboard Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie last December. The six, all members of the pressure group victims of Pan Am Flight 103, say words of condemnation are no longer enough. They want action to fight terrorism, and they want to see international cooperation at government level to step up security. We feel that the governments of the free world are handling the issue of terrorism incompetently and adequately, and we'll be discussing that at length tomorrow. Airport airline security, and to our dismay and disbelief, we found out on December 21st that it doesn't exist, and there must be an active partnership between the governments and the airlines, and we will be forwarding that course. During their stay, they'll be meeting government and airline officials in London, as well as travelling to Lockerbie to meet the local people and discuss the progress of the criminal investigation. British Airways flights have been getting back to normal after yesterday's 24-hour strike by cabin crew over the sacking of a colleague. There have been delays this morning, but British Airways says most domestic and European flights are now leaving on time. Staff at Heathrow and Gatwick have signed undertakings that they won't take further action. But in Manchester, 300 cabin crew are meeting to discuss the company's ultimatum. More news at 5 past 5. Now back to Steve Ryder in the Grandstand Studio. Thank you, Maura. This week in Bonn, the European Swimming Championships have been taking place, and indeed competition resumes there a little bit later today. Six days of competition in which British medal hopes have certainly been realised. We'll take you through the first three days now. We'll join Hamilton Blatt. 